I'm wanting to take on uh, an issue of the conflict that happens between leaders in particular uh, inside of both secular and religious organisations. But I've now finished about 50 years, just over 50 years, of being a very multi-tasked kind of public figure. Uh, part of it has been that I've been a pastor in one form or another, including planting churches, including giving leadership to networks of churches uh, over the last over 50 years. So I've been more than half a century looking at this. And during that time, I've watched the conflicts between leaders and what it's done, the damage it's done, not just to organisations themselves, but to individuals whose whole lives have been quite seriously damaged sometimes by the conflict that's gone on inside of groups. Now, we're all used to looking at the extremes of cult groups and the extraordinary damage done to individuals through through charismatic cult leaders who've done great harm uh, to their followers. Now, I, I don't want to get into that, but my academic work has been in the area of cultural anthropology, and in that I've looked at the subject of what we call revitalization movements. And, and these kind of creative movements trying to get up uh, a transformation of their uh, culture has been marked by a great deal of both the extremes of cult leaders through to mega churches with conflict between their leaders and so on. So I, I want to do a series of studies on the subject of, of conflict, uh, why conflict is caused between leaders, how the followers are damaged by this, are there principles inside of the Christian tradition that would help us deal with these issues? Because um, conflict is not just a matter of the church. Let's face it, the political arena is full of, uh, of the skeletons of, of potentially good leaders that have been chewed up and spat out inside of, uh, of political leadership. So. This is a very broad thing. It's not just a, a church thing or a religious thing. It's a human thing right across the board. But I want to have a, a look at why conflict occurs between good people. Why is it that people that are talented, uh, who are visionaries, who have great ideas, should end up in such conflict that their followers are profoundly wounded. And, and as I've already said, after more than half a century of 50 years of working as a leader in creative organisations, I uh, bear the scars of seeing some of the pain and struggle that's occurred. And I want to look at, at, at the question of human nature because I don't think the fact you find God or have some great religious experience makes you immune to the difficulty of human conflict in, in leadership and in groups. On the other hand, I want to look at one stage at the anthropology of this. Is this something that's part of the whole tribal human aspect? I want to look at some of the conflicts that traditionally we have said tear groups apart. Money, sex and power have been said to be major issues of conflict in any group. I want to look also at one stage at the question of, of what happens when different gifts, different gifted understandings of life come in conflict with each other. What happens with someone that's kind of a bit prophetic and feels I have the word of God and takes out a sword against what's going wrong in the culture. But uh, on the other side, 
uh, that person has friends that are pastoral, that care for people, that love people, and don't like this kind of confrontational view. Sometimes it is that the very gifts that people have inherently tend to conflict with each other. So I want to look at that. I want to look at circumstances because sometimes uh, both leadership, as someone has said, does history make a man or woman or does a man or woman make history? And that's a, a, a bit like which came first, the chicken or the egg. There really is quite a conflicting uh, area of, of discussion here. To what extent are the historical circumstances, the group circumstances, uh, part of what causes a breakdown in relationships? Well, let me say that in the conflict between good people, there's a long history in the Christian tradition of this particular conflict. After all, Mary, who we look on as a very saintly and wonderful woman, the biological uh, mother of Jesus, she ends up in a conflict with her own son when he wanders off and gets involved with a bunch of, uh, of um, sort of semi-academic religious leaders and they suddenly discover that they've lost their kid and he's not there in the group. And she comes back with a, a rather uh, upset question as to why he's caused this trouble in the group. So right at the beginning, of the Jesus story, you have a conflict between Mary and her son Jesus. On the other hand, I'm going to look at more detail later on at the conflict between the disciples. I mean, Peter and Jesus were in such conflict that at one stage, Jesus actually said, get behind me, Satan, after, uh, after uh, Peter had failed to understand what Jesus said about the the frightening future he was going to have when he would be executed. Or, we'll look at this later on, there's obvious conflict between the larger group and the inner circle group. Like while there were 12 disciples, there was an inner circle group that Jesus took with him into special situations. And uh, there was some conflict we see in the Gospels over that. And then there was conflict between some of the inner circle disciples where even their, uh, you know, mum got involved saying, well, is my son going to be the top dog on the other side of the river, so to speak? And, uh, and, and out of that we see a conflict between Peter and John as two great leaders of the initial uh, Jesus movement. But Peter and John are both in conflict, and I'll look into some of those details later on. On the other hand, St. Paul, um, arguably the one that rescued the Christian church from collapse, uh, my conviction is that if St. Paul had not been there to argue the case for the Christian faith in that first century, I, I doubt Christianity would have survived. I think he was specially called by God to help pull that together. But Peter uh, and, and uh, Paul are in conflict at one stage. At one stage, Peter and Barnabas, or should I say, Paul and Barnabas are in conflict with each other. Now, Paul is one of these uh, creative, get out there and change the world kind of um, uh, charismatic preachers in the marketplace, understands the multicultural nature of Rome, quite a remarkable character. But uh, Barnabas is called the son of consolation. Apparently that was the meaning of his name in his, his tribal language. And, uh, and, and dear Barnabas falls out with Paul and in the end they have an argument over a third person, John Mark, who uh, Paul later on says was one of his best supporters. But uh, Paul and Barnabas have a fallout over whether Mark should be dropped out of the team because he'd been a bit of a squib when they were in the midst of some dangerous situations. He hadn't taken his stand and stood with them. So 
Next time he wanted to come on a missionary journey, Paul said, hey, forget it, mate. Uh, you know, he's, he's not got what it takes to be part of the team. And Barnabas disagreed, and he took uh, uh, John Mark as, as one of his team, and Paul and, and uh, Barnabas never travelled together in their missionary journeys. But later on, Paul says that Barnabas was uh, a good man, but he also says that John Mark later on became one of his best friends. So he had a conflict between two apostolic journeying preachers, Paul and Barnabas. Uh, later on, and we'll look at this in more detail, uh, St Paul actually says that he had conflict with all the other apostles. In, in fact, he says that nobody stood with me. Nevertheless, the Lord stood with me. So he was kind of, even as a great apostle amongst all the other apostles, he had a fallout with the rest of his mates. And then when you read the uh, various epistles, then we will find as we go through uh, Paul's letters to the different churches, the early churches, that the congregations, some of them were even in conflict with St Paul and his authority to speak to them, and certainly internally they were in conflict with various congregational members. And some of the conflicts were over serious issues. It would seem that drunkenness on the one hand, and also at one stage it may be, it appears that, that even some child abuse may have been occurring, strangely enough, in the church that Paul said had the most of the outstanding miraculous gifts of God's Spirit, and yet they are in real trouble. So I want to finish this by simply saying that conflict between leaders historically is at the very beginning of the history of the Christian church, and we need to ask what causes conflict? How do we deal with conflict? Should we just dismiss the people that cause conflict? What is the purpose of, of discipline and attempts to straighten out the conflict? All of those things I want to look in this series of examination of why there is conflict between good people and uh, and for me, this is important after over 50 years of watching conflict in congregations that I've had to do with and conflict within God Squad. One of the things I really love, the God Squad Christian Motorcycle Club. And uh, I'm hoping that this series will help our own leadership deal with the question of conflict in a way that follows the pattern of Jesus, who we say is the, is the one who set us the leadership pattern regarding conflict.